Someone told me I left the plastic. <gasps> Hey, and welcome to my kitchen. We are going to continue cleaning out the freezer, eating all of the green things. For today's dinner, actually, let me back up. The first comment on today's video won a gift card. Can you believe it? They won a $50 Amazon gift card. So if you don't wanna miss out on the next giveaway, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and be one of the first ones to comment and you could win a gift card also. Okay, back to the cooking. For today's dinner, we are going to do something I have never done before. Da, da, da. Are you ready? Oh my gosh, it's ahi tuna steaks. I don't even think I've ordered these in a restaurant, honestly. I have six steaks right here. I have been getting questions about all of the meat that looks like it's from a HelloFresh box or something like that. These mailbox kits, you can actually just purchase proteins from them and not a meal. And I've been doing that with chicken and ground beef and steak and also the ahi tuna. I got these from Home Chef. Home Chef is probably one of my favorite as far as deliciousness of the meal. It is truly restaurant quality. Every single thing I have tried from Home Chef is like, so if you want to try out Home Chef, I do have a code down below. They are not sponsoring today's video at all. It's just one I've been using for several years, not often, but once in a while if I want like a little treat or something. So ahi tuna steaks, I was gonna grill them cause you're supposed to like grill them like a steak, but it's like 50 mile an hour wind outside. I don't think that's gonna be very good. Cast iron skillet, it is. A whole lot of broccoli. And we are going to make uh, rice broccoli tuna bowls. First thing I'm gonna do is put together my baked rice recipe. I got this recipe from my in-laws when I married my husband. I have cooked it for you on the channel before, I believe, but basically you put some rice and chicken broth and butter in an oven-proof pan and you bake it for an hour and boom, you're done. It is so delicious. Like, I'm not kidding. It's so so delicious and it's one of Haley's favorite ways that I cook rice. So when I make it, I try and double it, which is what we will be doing today. Let us gather the ingredientes. Oven on. Okay, that is going. And my recipe is in this book. Do you guys have a cookbook like this where it's all handwritten recipes like that I've collected over the years? I should probably rewrite all these down and like make my own cookbook or something like that, but I don't know. Feels like a lot of work to me. <laughs> I'm gonna go through and find the baked rice recipe just because I always forget like how much butter it is. And I need, because I'm doubling it, I need a big container here. Your oven proof pan does need a lid. This does need to be covered. Uh, so I'm gonna just use this five quart soup pot with lid, all oven proof. Two cups of rice. I am using Calrose rice today. Just a short grain. I guess you could use any rice you want. A half a cup of melted butter. This is seriously the easiest thing ever. Six cups of water. I know it feels like a ton with only two cups of rice, but I promise it's gonna work. Chicken bouillon or chicken stock or something like that. This is the one I have right now, so we'll use this. And you just want it to equal the amount of water that you use. So I use six cups. We'll use six teaspoons or two tablespoons of this. I took home ec when I was in middle school or junior high and I had to learn all of the conversions. So like three teaspoons equals one tablespoon, four tablespoons equals one quarter cup, all of those things. Do you know all of the conversions? One, two. I just wanna blend that a little bit so the chicken broth is kind of stirred in and the rice is coated and all the water and everything. There's no dry clumps. Lid on, oven for one, Hour, and then we can prep the veggies. I have my tuna steaks right here in this glass pan. We're gonna make a quick marinade to go over the top of it with some soy sauce, sesame oil, honey, and crushed red pepper flakes. Oh, and I just got honey on my fingers and now I'm all sticky. So the soy sauce is one tablespoon per steak. Since I have six, we're gonna do six tablespoons, which is a quarter cup and a half, half as much of the sesame oil, so that'll be three tablespoons. I am eyeballing this a little bit, but I know that this whole one is four, so I'll just go a little shy of this whole one. I love sesame oil. It has such a distinct flavor profile and scent. It is spectacular. The same amount of honey as sesame oil, so I'm gonna eyeball this as well. One, two, three. This is very strong crushed red pepper flakes. I'm gonna go a little shy on this, maybe half a teaspoon. Some fresh pepper. I feel like I should, <coughs> I just pepper sprayed myself. <coughs> <coughs> I 
It's not the Rona, it's the pepper. I feel like I should really get a new one of these. Does this look as sad to you as it does to me? <laughs> I'm just stirring this together until the honey is kind of incorporated, and then we will pour it all over our tuna steaks. I really want all of the broccoli to fit in here, and I'm a little nervous it's not going to. Fingers crossed. Uh... Oh my gosh, it fits, yay. I'm cooking these in the air fryer because seriously, the air fryer has changed vegetables at our house. And I realize it's just basically a mini convection oven, but it gets so much hotter in such a smaller area than your main oven. Like you can kind of do the same thing, but it would take a lot more energy. And I'm already using the oven for the rice. All I put on my vegetables, I'm serious. Little drizzle of oil, salt and pepper, that is it. You can go outside the box, add a little garlic. You can do some paprika. You can add other stuff, but if you just do oil, salt and pepper, I promise if you do enough salt, it'll be delicious. I've been using this larger kosher salt for stuff like this lately. I really like it, <laughs> big chunks of salt. And I'm obsessed with this pepper grinder. That's it. In she goes. Mine even has a broccoli button. Look at that. Oh man, <laughs> here's the baked rice fresh out of the oven. This is what it should look like. I had to let mine go another 10 minutes or so because it looked a touch wet. I just needed the rice to absorb the rest of the liquid. So now that this is out, this is this will stay warm for like 30 minutes at least. I'm gonna heat my pans up because this only needs to sear for about two minutes per side and dinner is served. I thought it would be fun to test the always pan, which I believe is overpriced. I did a full review of this pan and my little griddle right here. Both of these are up pretty high even though this says not to put it on a high. I did it anyway because I do what I want. The tuna is supposed to sear about two minutes per side. You're gonna cook it a lot like steak. You want like a medium rare situation. I am not left-handed by the way. First glance, I think the always pan overcooked them just a hair, like it got too hot maybe. Perhaps the pan is too thin to distribute the heat very well. Some of them did look like a medium kind of cook through. These look cooked a little bit more, but I am letting them rest on this cutting board for about five minutes before I slice them and then we will build our bowls. Time to build the bowl. First, I will scoop out my rice. That looks like about a cup or so of rice. The roasted broccoli then goes on top. So a couple of pieces of broccoli like that. And time for the tuna. So I need a knife. Yeah, I think I definitely overcooked it a little bit. The center is just the hintest of pink and it should be a little bit more pink across that. Definitely went on the medium, medium well side, but it should still be fine. When I get to the thicker part, it's slightly more pink over here. There is my completed bowl. It smells delicious. It looks amazing. And I actually do have one more thing I want to show you. But before I do that, I just kind of want to do a taste test. It doesn't taste anything like canned tuna. Not even a little bit. And that marinade is so strong. I only had it sitting in there for about 30 minutes and it really soaked into the fish. That's really delicious. Let's a really, really meaty flavor of fish. It really does mimic beef, honestly. It's the weirdest thing. Mm. Last thing we're gonna have with dinner. My neighbor texted me. She made homemade sourdough bread. She said it ended up really tangy and her kids don't like it because it's too tangy, but Dave and Haley love a tangy sourdough. So we're gonna have that like whole wheat sourdough also to go with it. That's it for dinner, I'll see you tomorrow. Hello friends, it is a makeup less Christine today. I just felt like I needed to give my skin a little bit of a break and we are going to do another very easy, delicious dinner tonight for a family of six. And yes, this is a Powerline shirt and I got it from JCPenney in the men's section if you wanted to go check it out. I just had to like represent, I can't tell you how many times I have watched this movie. It was an absolute favorite of mine as a teenager. So let me show you what we've got going on. In one of my recent grocery hauls, I picked up a ton of chicken thighs and chicken breast that were on 75% off, they're boneless, skinless. I grabbed two bottles of the Lowry's liquid marinade and dumped it all over the top. It's been marinating overnight. And here comes Andrew with the other bowl 
that's these are the chicken breasts so I showed you the thighs. This bowl is the chicken breast. It's a total of about six and a half pounds of meat. Yes, we're not gonna eat all of that tonight. It's a little bit of meal prep and dinner in one because just like marinated grilled chicken for meal prep, you just can't go wrong. Next up, we are gonna take some clearance vegetables and cook them and that's it. And we're gonna have clearance vegetables and grilled chicken and that's gonna be dinner. Here's what we've got going on. I'm gonna cut up these potatoes. Obviously, I'm gonna cut those off and dump this and this in my Instant Pot, and I'm gonna do a cauliflower mash with a little bit of potato. My kids don't like the cauliflower on its own, but if you kind of go like half seas or two thirds of this with one third of this and mush it all together, it's a lot better. We'll be using all of this up, and I also am going to be cutting up these Brussels sprouts. I'll probably cook them up in the air fryer because they're just so easy that way. These have been sitting in my fridge for a couple of days. They still look just fine. Brussels sprouts, this mash here, the grilled chicken. And it's gonna be delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also going to cook up this garlic bread take and bake loaf from the Essential Baking Company. I got this from my Thrive Market box. That's gonna be our dinner. The chicken, like on the grill, maybe 15, 20 minutes. This is probably gonna take the longest in the Instant Pot at 15 minutes, air fryer for 15 minutes. So all we have to do is prep everything, throw it together, and it's gonna be time to eat. I have Andrew prepping the Brussels for me. Show him how we're gonna go about it. What? What? Oh, <laughs> that's wrong, wrong bowl. I'm probably holding the knife wrong. Um, yes, you are, but that's okay. Just as long as you don't get a finger. Yeah, so we're just putting them into quarters. And when I say we, I mean you. We're putting them into quarters. They look like that. They'll cook really nicely. When you half them or quarter them, all of the seasonings can get into these little layers really well. This is washed and ready to eat. I'm just gonna dump that right in like that. Pound and a half of cauliflower. And now I will cut up those potatoes and throw those in as well. Mise and knife coming in strong for all the potato work. So everything is in and I'll add just a little bit of water. Just to prevent any burning or anything at the bottom. Anyone else have a hard time getting that lid on? Oh, before you start, make sure that the ceiling ring is in all the way. I have had problems with that. That looks okay, but it's good to do a double check. Seal on the back. Someone told me I left the plastic, oh, I did leave the plastic cover on. Oh my gosh, look. We've owned that for like Oh my gosh, I've had this for over three years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I feel sheepish. Never felt dumber. Okay, we're just gonna go manual, probably 15 minutes, I think. Time to get out the air fryer for the Brussels sprouts. I have the Brussels sprouts in my air fryer. Don't mind the dog. Uh, people are coming in the house. We're just gonna set it in here for about 400 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes and that's it. The only thing I have on here is oil, salt, and pepper. Let's do that one, that one, let's do that one. This looks amazing. It's like all, ow, it's all drippy. Hang on, ow. There we go. It. This looks done. Oh yes. That looks delicious. My potatoes and cauliflower are done and in it I threw, ow, that's hot, don't touch that, don't touch a hot pan. In here I put some butter. I had a little bit of heavy cream in the refrigerator so I just wanna finish that up and I threw in the is it Dubliner cheese from Kerrygold. I had some shredded up, just wanted to use it up as well. I'm gonna come in with my good old Mr. Masher guy and hopefully combine all of these together. I will also taste for salt and pepper. Now normally I would do cauliflower in my food processor, it makes it smoother, but I don't really wanna get it out and dirty another dish. So I'm gonna do it this way. Time to taste for salt and pepper, very important. Salt, needs more salt. Another day, another dinner, and I don't know what to make today. I don't really have a plan. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into my outside fridge and pull out all of the ingredients and figure out what we're gonna do. I had ordered a meal box kit it was supposed to arrive on a Friday. It came on a Tuesday. Nothing was warm, the meat was bad. <laughs> I had to throw some of the vegetables away. So I contacted them. They g gave me a refund, no questions asked, it was fine. But some of the ingredients are okay. What if we pull all of those out, see what we see, 
make dinner with the leftover ingredients? Maybe? Whatever, here we go. <laughs> hey, it's me again. So new plan. I didn't realize that these were bad too. You probably can't tell, but this asparagus is like slimy. There's like this sauce right here that is so gross. This broccoli is moldy and brown. That box was a total loss. And we're down to square one. I'm gonna go look for some more ingredients. I'll meet you back here if I find something. Hopefully we eat dinner tonight. I think the plan is to do two different dinners because I found this open bottle of sauce in the refrigerator that needs to be used. This actually came in the mailbox kit and this is fine, this naan. And of course I have some naan in the freezer of the clearance variety. So I thought I could use those with this mozzarella cheese and make some little mini pizzas with some bell pepper and vegetables. That's option one. Option two is actually gonna be dinner tonight and breakfast tomorrow is I'm going to make and then prep some breakfast burritos. I got out this uh, Polish sausage that I have. Of course I have eggs. We're gonna chop up a bunch of veggies to go in the breakfast burritos and cook up these hash browns. Someone can have pizza, someone can have breakfast burrito, they can pick whatever they want, and then I can have leftover breakfast burrito for tomorrow. Pretty easy dinner. There's a couple of things I feel like I could eat every day and not get sick of. One of them is pizza. The other one is burgers. <laughs> the third one's probably breakfast burritos. <laughs> and probably also cookies, but I don't know that that's a great dinner. Anyway, so let's get going. I decided to make a more delicious pizza sauce, so I'm gonna pour this in a pan with this. Oh, it's gonna be delicious. Oh yeah, there we go. Your mind has just been blown. video with a little taste test from a little south of us. MJ was awesome enough to send an amazing box of all kinds of snacks. She said it was from Central and South America. I will say some of these items have things that were produced in Texas. I definitely can't eat all of these things by myself, so I'm gonna have some company today. Let's get started on something sweet. Strawberry filled cookies. Yeah. They kind of look like a Nutri-Grain bar. Oh, cute, look at that. They kind of look like Fig Newtons. Yeah, a little bit. Here you go, Haley. Strawberry filled cookies. Ooh. Um, I hate it when that happens. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. It's more like a cookie. It's got a little bit more crunch to it than a traditional Nutri-Grain bar. It's a lot like a Nutri-Grain bar. It is. Like a lot, a lot. It's like on point with the flavor. Mm-hmm. The flavor? Totes. Totally. This one is peanut marzipan. And I don't know much about marzipan. What do you know about it? Nada. Zero. <laughs> okay, well, the ingredients are sugar, peanuts. I'm in. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it smells like a... Peanut butter cup. I totally had this before. That is I very sweet. I was expecting sweet. that. It's like fake peanut butter. Like fake it, peanut butter? It is. It's like overly sweet Whoa. peanut butter. Well, that's a kick in the jaw right there. I think that's <laughs> a little too sweet for me. <laughs> it is a lot. I'm not used to peanuts being that sweet, and I like peanut butter cups, so that's saying something. Yeah. This is one of those ones that says made in Texas, made in Dallas. Corn churritos. Churritos. Chili flavored corn sticks. That's what we got. A little like that. Oh, actually, yeah, I actually like those. Those are really good. Those it's, are good. Those are good. Mm -hmm. It's like a cross between a chili cheese Frito and a hot Cheeto. Yeah, it's filled. That's in. perfect. Mm -hmm. Wait, that it's is spicy? I ate yeah, one. Yeah, it, it, it comes. It builds, it builds. It's very much Frito-like. I just got a kick in the back of my it is, Yeah, it's a, it is a Frito. It's a corn chip. 10 out of 10. All I like those. that. This one's like super mushy. I'm feeling like it's chocolate and like marshmallow on the inside. Who wants that one? You're probably bring me. Whoa. There you go. Yeah. This Watch is a tamarind this. sucker. Oh, What's a tamarind? One. And I'm gonna try this uh, Nestle milk chocolate style bar. 
Mine is Mango King. Ooh. <laughs> it's like... Oh, you're spilling chocolate. Yeah. Here, yeah, just, yeah, yeah I don't care. Just, ah! <laughs> it thinks it's really I like that. It's a face. This is so, like, traditional Mexican candy where it's, it's got a sweet, fruity flavor, but it's covered in chili powder. It's awesome. <laughs> For many people, it's kind of. Uh, I like it. I like sweet and spicy. So you need to try a bite of that. Okay. I mean, a bite. Oh, I have other than. Andrew, you would like this because you like mango. Mm. Not working. Are you, are you doing You're okay? Making that so much. It's not gonna cold. break. It's chewy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know what to think of it. I think Andrew and I might have something similar. To you that. do. Yeah. They're, they're um. Oh. They didn't even try to make that a circle. <laughs> it's just a glob. It's a glob. It's, it's just like, kind of like, I'm wait. sorry, what is this trying to be? It's tamarind. tamarind. It's like someone's tamarind. Tamarind wrapped it, probably like coated in chili powder. I don't know what tamarind is. It's a big old bean pod. It's wow, a really it's a, unique flavor. It's his brain. <laughs> that is weird. I actually kind of like it. Oh, good. Not a lot, but I'll eat it. <laughs> I like it, but not a lot. <laughs> Obleas. 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 Mini wafer with milk candy. What? Ah! Oops. Okay. <laughs> you Americans always just take them. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just flinging candy all over the place. My my mouth is on fire from the chill. Yeah, that really. That one's that one's a bit spicy. Woo! That one just keeps on giving. Mom, do you think I'll like that one? <laughs> this one, I don't know. Here. What? Okay, the wafer looks like it would be. Do you eat the wafer? It looks like paper. A little bit. Whoa. It kind of, is. It kind of tastes like paper. It's paper. I just feel like paper. This part. Wait, I thought it was chocolate. That isn't chocolate. No, it's milk candy. Milk candy. It's more like caramel. caramel. Oh, I think the wafer is really meant for packaging. You're probably right. How else can I keep my fingers clean? Yeah. I will agree. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, those are good. I want to try these watermelon bites. We can also do these Chinese candy dried salted plums with pickle and lemon. <laughs> oh, these are sticky. That is so salty. The palates of like everyone is. <laughs> is that not even sweet? What the heck? Ew. It's sweet. <laughs> it's just hidden under a lot of salt. Wow. <laughs> what is that? I am not eating that whole Why bite. Why is it green? So, dried salted plums with oh. pickle and lemon. <laughs> I don't. You guys want to sniff this? Mom, you want to put that in there? I can smell it from here. <laughs> Oh. Here, try uh, that tiny little bite. Here, this is here's what we are feasting on tonight. <laughs> I didn't even get to the plum. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, that is some pickle. Oh my gosh. Oh, don't bite into it. I had to swallow, I couldn't chew anymore. I, I need to wash that puppy down. Oh my Holy gosh. Cow. Dried salted plums with pickle and lemon. As soon as I bit into it, it, it was, was just pickle. exploding pickle, pickle, pickle. with salt and sour. The second ingredient is salt. Why is it spicy? It's not. It's is something else still spicy? <laughs> Dude, that was kind of mean, actually. That was right up there with that soap gum. <laughs> that was so gross. I know. I want to try this coconut candy. Oh, it's Mexico. Hey, it's it, is, it is Mexico. It is the flag. Here, you guys want to break that one in half? Sure. We call that the bandera. Mmm, so like, who knows so much? Is each color going to be a different flavor? No, I think it's just I all think coconut. Mmm, I like that one. I still taste pickle. <laughs> that's something I can get behind right there. Yeah, that's super good. I like it a lot. I have a mix of pickle and coconut, and it is not, I would not <laughs> recommend. <laughs> hey, mom. Hmm. I don't know. No? No. What? I'm sorry. <clears throat> what? That's good. I like that one a lot. It's good. You put hey, it. Are you interested in the salsa getti? Watermelon flavored, hot candy with strips of tamarind flavored sauce. We'll see. There's sauce. You what is that? There's sauce? You add sauce. You're supposed to add the hot sauce. I'll pass on that. <laughs> we can't even say we've tried it unless we've done Wait, it. Wait, I kind of want the hot sauce. Mm, I don't. Okay, we're, I'm going to put a little bit in here in the bottom so you can That's like. That's still like. Ooh, I like it. That's delightful. Mm -hmm. Super good. Are you gonna dip it in the hot sauce? Yeah. Mom, okay, I will see how it's thick. Well, it's spicy for a second and then it goes away. What Haley said. Strawberry marshmallow poopy thingy. Oh, look. There's sticks. 
I think I have a pickle in my throat. <clears throat> I like that. I kind of like it. That's totally good. You like that? Yeah. Oh, oh. Okay, the last bite is good. The last flavor. It was like when the strawberry finally hit me. This is a guava candy roll. Oh, you know that's what I like. I knew you'd like that. I'm glad you saved the best for last. So I don't know, like, am I supposed to, like, or like cut it or like break it or what? Break it? Oh, there we go. Um, you have pickle on your face. I sure do. Oh, Thank you for I love noticing. Guava. Oh man, I love guava. Oh yeah. Pineapple flavored hot candy strips with tamarind flavored filling. Doing it. Let's do it. There's a theme here. I think there's a lot of Sweet and spicy. That's what most of the Mexican candy really is. Like spicy sweet? I like that. I kind of do too. It's a vibe I can get behind. Whoa, oh, those look like worms. <laughs> <laughs> Pineapple with tamarind oh. filling? I like that. Oh, that is weird. No, just keep chewing. It gets good. <laughs> okay. That changed flavors as you chewed into it. Yes, it does. What is that? <laughs> That one's weird. Wow. I'm, I'm with Haley. I don't know why I like that one. <laughs> Huge thanks to MJ for sending the box of snacks. There's no way I could have done it without my fam helping me out on that one. That was a lot. Awesome. Thank you. And we mixed up a gallon of uh, mango Zuko to drink to wash everything down with. So that was super thoughtful. All sorts of crazy flavors. <clears throat> Spicy, mm -hmm. sour, mm -hmm. sweet, very strong. We got everything. It was good. Pickle. That's its own flavor. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> That's gonna be it for us. End of the video. Thanks for joining. Bye. See you.